Hey folks, this is a, another video that aspires to teach Google Apps Scripts spreadsheet app to beginners. In previous lessons, we learned how to access Google Sheets workbooks, how to create them from scratch, how to make copies, and how to access individual sheets within the workbooks. We're going to resume by navigating to the Files module where we will be creating a new script file. This lesson is going to teach you how to access the data that exists in a single Google Sheet. So we're going to call this D underscore data underscore access. We're gonna hit enter. We'll change the name of the function from my function to data capital A access. We will save our project and then select line two. We'll hit enter once, add two slashes for a comment, and say access the workbook. We will be declaring a variable called WB, which is short for workbook, which will be set equal to spreadsheet app dot. At this time, you'll use one of the three methods that we discussed in the access workbook lesson. I am using a bound app script, which means that I can use get active spreadsheet with an open parentheses. I'm gonna hit the right arrow. I'm gonna add a semicolon. If you are attempting uh, to access a workbook uh, from a unbound app script, or if you want to access data from another workbook that this app script is not bound to, then you will need to use open by ID or open by URL. We'll hit enter twice, left arrow twice, two slashes for a comment where we will say, access the sheet. Hit enter, tab. Declare a variable called sheet, which will be set to wb.getSheetByName with an open parentheses. You'll use whatever quotation style you prefer, and then you will enter the name of the sheet that you want to access. My sheet is called data, uh, so I've entered that and hit the right arrow on my keyboard twice add a semicolon, hit enter twice, hit the left arrow two times, where we will add two slashes for a comment, where we will say access the range. We're gonna hit enter and tab. So this is uh, where we will pick up our lesson. Uh, so we're gonna start learning some new stuff here. So we're going to declare a variable called range, which will be set equal to sheet.get capital R range. The get range function takes four arguments. Two are mandatory and two are optional. We will be using um, this spreadsheet tab here uh, in order to get data out. So you can see that my data begins on row one and it starts in column one. Those are the first two arguments of the get range method. Uh, you need to declare your starting row, your starting column, the number of rows you want to go, and the number of columns that you want to go. So the first thing that we're going to enter in is the number one, because my data begins on row one. An additional note about get range is that it begins with an index that is set at one, which means that the first value is represented by the number one, the second value is represented by the number two, and the third value is represented by the number three. This might sound basic, but there are going to be instances where you are working with data structures that have an index that begins at zero. Most notably, arrays and two-dimensional arrays have an index that begin at zero. Within this lesson, we are going to engage with two-dimensional arrays which means that we are going to have a data type where the first value is represented by zero and the second is represented by a one. It's always important to identify what the starting point is for your index so that you can calibrate yourself accordingly. So because get range has an index that starts at one, when we want to start at the first row, we can enter in the number one. We're going to enter in a comma so that we can move to our second argument, which is the column that we want to act, the first, uh, the starting column that we want to access. 
So because we're starting in column A, that is also the first column, so we can enter in the one. When we add a comma, we are moving on to uh, the third argument, which is optional, which is the number of rows that you want to go. So in my spreadsheet, I have nine rows of data, so I'm going to enter in the number nine. I'm going to add another comma, which will then allow me to enter in the final argument, which is optional, which is the number of columns that we want to go. So there are three columns in my data set, so I'm going to enter in the number three. I'm going to go to the right of uh, the get range method, and I'm going to use a semicolon. I'm going to hit enter once, enter twice, two slashes for a comment, and then I'm going to say logging for transparency. I'm going to hit enter and tab. I'm going to say logger.log. I'm going to open up a parentheses. I'm going to pass in that range variable. I'm going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard, add a semicolon, and I'm going to hit run. Cool, so the uh, output here is giving me range, which means that we have successfully accessed the data range. But you'll notice that we are not getting any values out of our range, uh, and that's because we need to use a method in order to get our values. So we are going to hit the X on our execution log, and we are going to start exploring the methods that we have to extract data from a sheet. So we're going to delete the semicolon after get range, and we are going to use the dot method, and then we're going to start typing in V for values, and we're going to type out a value, uh, because this is going to show us uh, some, you know what, actually, instead of typing value, delete value and do get capital V value, and this will show us all the value methods that are available to us. So we're only going to focus on these four, which is get value, get values, get display value, and get display values. I've never used get rich text value or get rich text values. So if you have and you're watching this video, please leave a comment with some of the use cases that you've used. For our purpose, though, we're going to only focus on the first four here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with get value, and we're going to look at how all four methods output data. So we're going to add a um, open parentheses. We're going to hit the right arrow on our keyboard, and we're going to use a semicolon. So we're presently using the get value method. So we are going to uh, save our project and then hit run so that we can see what we get. So get value is a hyper literal name, which means that you are only getting a value. So you can see in our output log, even though we entered in that we wanted to start at row one, start at column one, collect nine rows of data, collect three columns of data, we're only getting name. And you'll also notice that name is just structured as name. There's no square bracket, there's no single quote, there's no indication of anything here other than a single value that has been returned. So we're going to hit X, and we are going to copy lines 9 through 13. We're going to click at the end of line 13. We're going to hit Enter twice, left arrow on our keyboard four times, and then we're going to paste the contents of our clipboard. We're going to go to line 16 here, and we're going to go to the end of dot get value, and we're going to make it get values. We're going to hit run. And now you can see that there's a significant difference between get value, which is happening on line 10, and get values, which is happening on line 16. The difference between the two is get value only returns one value, whereas get values returns all of the values and has it structured in a two dimensional array. This is why it's important that you get comfortable with arrays and two dimensional arrays, because that is the way that data structures extracted from Google Sheets are going to be appearing to you. Additionally, there are going to be certain methods that you're going to use where you're going to want to write to a Google Sheet where you need to understand how arrays are structured. 
My fundamentals video dives deeply into arrays in a way that we won't in this video. So if this is the first time that you're hearing about arrays or you're working with arrays and the things that we discuss in this video series aren't clicking for you, then I highly encourage you to check out that fundamentals video where you can explore more deeply what's happening and how to work with them. Now, the other thing that I want to note quickly is that I want you to remember the way that this number is structured here. Uh, because this is going to be a significant difference between get values and get display values, uh, which is what we're going to touch on next. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Uh, so if you um, copied something else to your clip, uh, clipboard, um, make sure you highlight the one of the data sets that we have um, entered in here. So in this case, I'm going to highlight lines 15 through 19. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click to the end of line 19. I'm going to hit enter twice. I'm going to hit the left arrow on my keyboard four times. And then I'm going to paste in the range variable and the logger statement. We are going to modify um, the get values or the get value statement. So let's delete it from the end so that we just have sheet.getRange and then our data range. Uh, we're going to resume by hitting dot get capital D display value and we're going to have an open parentheses uh, so we're just going to log this out so you can see it but we're not going to keep it so we're going to run it again get display value does the exact same thing that get value does where uh, it's hyper literal when you say get value you only get one so if you attempt to write to um, a sheet using set value or set display value it's going to give you an error if you're passing a two-dimensional array to it because it's expecting only one value. So what we're going to do, because you can kind of see that it's the same thing, is we're just going to reuse line 22. So instead of being get display value, we're going to do get display values. Uh, and when we run this, we're going to get an output that looks very similar to get values. But when we look at the number columns, you can see that there is a significant difference between the two. And it might be very subtle, but as you get more experience, this will stand out uh, more uh, significantly. And that's that get display values is returning a string, whereas get values is returning a number. So if you attempt to do math using the number from get display values, you are not going to be able to do it. It's going to result in. Um, two strings being used, two pieces of text, rather than two numbers. Um, so get display values returns how the value appears in the sheet with the formatting from the sheet. So I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet to make this more clear. I'm going to transform this number into a currency. So I'm in the United States, and it turns it into the American dollar symbol. When I run my script, you can see that when I use get uh, values uh, on line 16, I am still returning the number amount, which is represented by dot zero, which is an indication that it is a float, and thus it is an integer that can be uh, that can have math functions done on it. Whereas when I use get display values, I have this currency symbol here, which is great if I just want to display this data. But if I wanted to do any type of um, transformation on it, it will no longer work. So I'm going to attempt to show you um, what that looks like. Uh, so I'm going to be using um, some uh, array um, comprehension in order to access elements of the two-dimensional arrays. So again, if this isn't familiar to you, I encourage you to check out my fundamentals video. So I'm going to begin on line 19. I'm going to hit enter twice. I'm going to add two slashes for a comment, and I'm going to say add two numbers together. I'm going to hit enter and tab, and uh, I am going to use logger.log, and I am going to say range square bracket one, which means that I want to access the second array within my two-dimensional array. I'm then going to click to the right. I'm going to add square brackets. And I want to access the third element. So I need to enter the number 2. 
because arrays are zero indexed and zero is one, one is two, two is three. So I'm going to do range one, two plus range square bracket two, go to the right square bracket two, which means I'll be accessing the third array in my two dimensional array and the third element. I'm going to hit run. And now you can see when I am accessing the second array's third element, which is 1200, and I add it to the array's third element, which is 34,300, I am getting 35,500 because that is the product of those two values. So I have successfully uh, completed a math function. Now, if I copy that same line, and I go to line 28, and I hit enter twice, and then I paste in uh, that logging statement, and I hit run, you'll notice that I don't get a math statement. I get a concatenation of two values. So you can see the first part of our logging output is the first value, which is 1,200 American dollars. The second portion that is concatenated next to it is the second amount, which is $34,300. So this is showing us that we are working with two data types that are strings. And when we use the plus symbol, we are doing a concatenation rather than summing our two values, which is what's happening here. So to briefly summarize what's happening here, you'll want to use get values when extracting data that you want to transform within your app script file. If you are looking to extract values because you want to uh, present them in an email or in a slide deck or in a Google document, then get display values might be the method that you choose. Ultimately, what I want you to take away from this is a fluency with the four primary methods for extracting data from a Google Sheets workbook data range, which is get value, which will return one value, get display value, which will return the formatted value, get values, which will return a two-dimensional array with the data, or the get display values, which will return a two-dimensional array that will return the data as it is formatted in the sheet. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to learn more about Google Apps Script or the Spreadsheet app, then check out the playlist in the description.